Tell us a little bit about your experience as an entrepreneur and the founder of the David Allen Company. What's it been like? I wasn't really entrepreneurial other than saying, okay, well, how can I somehow make a business out of this and at least you know, support the kind of lifestyle me and my wife just wanted to have. It was more a boutique kind of consulting thing. And once the book hit a nerve out there and started to become a bestseller, I had the option of just keeping it just to us or just to me and my own sort of speaking platform and, and so forth. But the world kept knocking on our door and we just watched this thing, this methodology start to affect anybody. There was no cultural bias, no gender bias, no age bias, no personality style bias to the uptake on this. And it improved anybody's condition. So just from the standpoint of God, you know, well, it took the 25 years to figure out what I'd figured out. I figured the rest of my life would take me to figure out how do we now distribute this to the planet as best we can for the people who want it. I'm not going to beat anybody's head up about it, but there are so many people who can use this but don't know about it. So I said, how do I, keep a how do I make a business that can make that happen? Yeah, so what so is your business model? If you call that entrepreneurial, then sure. Yeah, it would be, but it's kind of the last thing an entrepreneur maybe knows is that that's what they are. But again, I'm not the best player for that place, so I figured I needed a team of people who could know how to do that, both instructional design as well as how do you manage it, the business aspect of this so you've got a viable and sustainable business so it can still afford to keep doing this. So, and, and decided not to take on investors. You know, we had a lot of people sort of circle around us and sort of nibble at us about this, but this is such unique material that we didn't want to risk, you know, someone who sort of didn't buy into the DNA of this fully and denigrating that. So the more I can make sure that that works and we've got a great team of people that have been there and now we've recently you know partnered with a, a group of people to help us franchise this around the world so you know that's great you know that that to me is what's really fun and we have some fabulous uh, franchisees now that have shown up in officially in 50 countries uh, many of them are startups really just getting they're just starting to get their feet in into this arena most of them are acolytes and huge aficionados of GTD, and that's why they wanted to do it within their own countries and regions. Uh, so we're starting to get some traction there. It was one, one reason Catherine and I moved to, to Amsterdam, because you know, UK and Ireland and Scandinavia and Western Europe is getting a good bit of traction now with this, with our franchisees there. So that's fun. That's great, because those folks, have, they have the entrepreneurial spirit, you know, as well as you know, love of this methodology. So anything I can do to help build their brands, support them in terms of what they're doing. So, you know, that's fun. And what are your other big markets? We now have exclusive franchisees for China, for India, Brazil, Russia, uh, as well as, you know, we're still doing this work in the U.S. and are now kind of essentially kind of reversing that model back even into the U.S. and finding some partners to be our distribution channel. We decided a while ago, given the nature of kind of my DNA and the folks around me, we didn't want to necessarily build a big company. So if we were going to try to scale this education, we could do it through partnerships and technology. So partnerships is with the franchise model itself and any people who already have a distribution channel, their own markets, and want to then you know, funnel this into it. That was our strategy, was trying, trying to find what's the best way to do that. Who are the best people we could trust that, that could make that work? and build those relationships. So we have a great relationship with SM Cub, SMCOV, David Covey, who's Stephen Sr.'s son, and Stephen Marduk, so they were the co-COOs of Franklin Covey for a number of years. So they're working with us to help build that and leverage the franchise network out there. So that's really great and, and fun to do. We're also working on a, a self-paced uh, online learning program. So, uh, at least in English, anyway. Uh, so that's, that's that other market called and, you know, we have now some very big global clients. Then what we're positioning ourselves is to be, oh, you know, you have a 400,000 person global company, but you want this to be done in the local language with the local book in the local language. Because getting things done, at least the original version was in 30 languages, and the new edition is getting translated into all of those as well. So that's going to be available out there. So now we can say, okay, you're going to have the same information without any denigration of the quality. We can do it in Norwegian, and, and you know we can do it in, in Portuguese. We can do it in in Mandarin, and we have people then locally based that know those cultures and so forth. So that's again the long bet, and you know that's that to me is fun. I've always said this was global stuff. I've always thought of myself as a, a bit of a global person, so it's kind of fun. At you know I turned seventy this year, so I was like, okay, now now I get to kind of do that that level of game. And I have a, a CEO of the company who's been able to, to over the last three or four years take over the most of the operational aspect you know, of what we're doing, giving me the freedom to do what I do best, which is this kind of stuff. <laughs> and, and anything else that sort of, you know, strikes my fancy. 